Hey and welcome to the latest episode of Playcast, the gaming podcast from the award-winning team at JumpCut Online. Once again, this week I'm joined by Kyle and Sterling from the Play team and we've got a bit of a cool discussion about the next-gen launch because this week we've had the first of that with the Xbox. So, guys, yes, as I've just said before we start recording, few TV issues. Who wants to jump in first? <laughs> Do you want to kick things off, Sterling? I don't know. I don't know if I should because I'm, I I'm not buying anything next gen really. It Xbox just doesn't have <laughs> any games that I want to buy <laughs> because well, it's a useful perspective to have. So me and Sam don't just you know come across as PlayStation fanboys. You're like the perfect it's true. you know kind of medium here. Well, it's just it's just too expensive. Like especially in Canada, it's. It's a hundred dollars more than this. Like, how much is a is the PS five for you guys? It's four hundred and fifty pounds, which I think yeah is, for the yeah, for the disc for, version. Yeah, like, and then three four nine for the digital edition. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's four ninety nine here. I think, uh-huh. and it's just too much, especially with the mm. pandemic and everything going on. <laughs> Nobody having yeah like, yeah again. It's such a weird time for consoles to launch. Even even despite the holidays, right right around the corner. Mm. I did think before we got out the price reveals. I was curious to see how cheap they would go with them. I mean, I think I don't know if you guys agree. I think they came out a bit more expensive than a, a few people oh, yeah. were hoping. Oh, really? I, I actually was thought thinking... they came out cheaper. I'm in the really. Yeah, I I was. We had a kind of like bets on within our graph. I thought this was going to be at least four nine nine, like the 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 PS five disc di- edition. Yeah. I don't know why. I just maybe it's just because the last, you know, the PS four. I think I paid four fifty for it. I was like, well, it can't cost the same, but. I guess they just maybe because Xbox announced their price, they realize maybe because now we've heard that Sony wanted to charge over seventy dollars for their Ooh. games or whatever it was, or over seventy pounds. So maybe they were yeah. going to charge more and they've been forced to. So, but I don't know. I, I think I was quite when when I watched the launch, I was like, "Yep, yeah, that's a price I'm I'm happy with." I was just going to say when you buy a game in Canada after tax, it's ninety dollars, and and. What? Like some of the PS5 games are ten dollars more expensive, so now it will be a hundred dollars a game. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I think that works out to. This is what's confusing. I don't know. In America, it's sixty dollars yeah. yeah. for a game, but that if we pay well, if you pay full price, it, like the your retail store, it's fifty five pound for a PS4 game, which I think works yeah. out about ninety Canadian dollars. But now, if the likes of Demon Souls, which are sixty nine ninety nine, that's probably hitting towards a hundred dollars, mm-hmm. which is, I hope, I mean, I don't want games to sell badly, but I would like maybe, I get the costs are going up, but it just seems such it wasn't even you no know, incremental. Like oh, it's an extra five pound, it's okay, it's an extra twenty pound from what you're paying on Amazon. It's just like how have we made such a jump? You know, game prices have been the same for so long. Why now is the time to go? Boom, an extra twenty pound each. I just think a lot of people don't understand the real price of what it takes to make a game. Because, like, think of how much it costs to make a movie, and yeah. games take. Let's let's talk about like a a triple A game. It takes at least five years to make. You're employing a couple hundred people all year round, as well as outsourcing some of your work, and uh it's not cheap to pay any kind of game developer right like game devs don't make a ton of money but they definitely aren't scrapping for money yeah so like yeah games sell for 60 70 80 bucks times like a million that's a lot of money but at the same time it's like you have to employ all those people keep your office going and then also just have enough profit in the bank to start your next project i'm I'm okay with games being a bit more expensive. Ten dollars really isn't that much to someone like me, but again, when you realize, I think a study was shown that most people only really buy like three new games a year. That's like the casual market, but still, I wish I only bought three <laughs> games a year. <laughs> I'd be loaded. No, that's a good point. Actually, that's still in like talking about kind of how it feeds back into the actual industry side of it 
Um, I know, like I was saying in the player chat the other day, like, I can't remember who said it, but they were saying like they kind of go by the mentality that um, it's kind of like ten pound per kind of hour into the price. So if a game's like sixty pound, they expect kind of like sixty hours of gameplay or something like that. Um, which is an interesting like thing to talk about because I I don't know whether a lot of games that are coming out at the minute are, are reflecting that. I mean, there's been a few kind of <laughs> comments this week about Mars Morales in specific because it's I think they've said the campaign is only about twelve hours or something, and then maybe eighteen hours once you've done all the the side like missions and stuff like that. Do you? So there's a bit of. Do you gone. agree with that statement though? That is is that how you value your games and your time? Is the dollar per hour? Um, I, I think not it necessarily. Depends, yeah. It depends on the game because, like, if it's something like I don't know, for example, let's take Uncharted: The Lost Legacy, where it's not exactly a full game, but there's not, there's still kind of like a wealth of content there. I personally wouldn't necessarily pay like a full retail price for that. Like, I'd pay like thirty pound for it. Um, if it was like a full kind of title, like like Uncharted Four. For example, then I don't mind kind of paying the more traditional tag price to it. I think it really depends on the on the kind of game it is. Didn't they, the Lost Legacy? They, did they not charge a cheaper price than full price? I'm sure. I can't remember. I didn't. I think it was up. about thirty or thirty five yeah. pound or so instead of about fifty. I think it, it definitely depends on the game because I think like when I bought The Last of Us Two, obviously it's a full price game, but I know like this is a game I'm probably going to play once. It's probably going to last about ten hours. It's a lot of money to put down for. Well, I don't know. It's hard to justify because there's times you'll maybe spend fifty pound on like a concert or a show, and like, well, that's like two hours. That's sometimes how I look at it. Like, I've spent more money on things that have lasted way, yeah. way less than this. But the Last of Us Two, surprisingly, I played it, like three times, so I got like thirty hours out of it, going for the platinum trophy and stuff. So it it can, it it's just it's one of those things. It's just it's part of the hobby, isn't it? Sometimes buyer's remorse comes and goes with gaming as a hobby, oh, which course. is part of the hobby. Like even with super mario all-stars which i know there's a lot of controversy about why that cost that price in the first place but i was like okay i've played galaxy i know i'll play that for well i thought galaxy in my head because when i played it when i was 10 I was like, oh, that game's like 50 hours long it's not it's about 10 <laughs> even when you 100 percent it and so that was 10 hours and then i learned that i hate super mario sunshine <laughs> and never want to play it again um it's probably an unpopular opinion and i've not played 64 so i'm like right so that's Fifty pound for Galaxy essentially because I'm not enjoying the other two games. It's like mm, I feel a bit cheated there. So it's just yeah, it's tough. It's a, such a first world problem. I know wasting money <laughs> and then but yeah, I, I don't. I used to. I think when I was maybe a couple years younger, I was like, okay. I need to get as many hours. But that's also started to ruin games for me. Like, I've got Days Gone, not full price. Got it on sale. And I was like, okay, this is a game I can sink thirty hours into, and I couldn't stand it after five hours. I'm like, okay, so I was like, I've not been <laughs> cheated that much yeah. but i still don't you know but yeah what a lot of people do what absolutely boggles my mind is they buy a game like they buy it let's say they buy a full price they're not happy with it but they continue playing to justify their purchase so not only are you uh not yeah. enjoying your time you're you're wasting it even more <laughs> like you it I, it doesn't make any <laughs> like and people always say like oh i just want to or it's the same with tv shows like i just want to get to the end i want to know how it ends just google it just just look it up <laughs> you don't need to waste 50 yeah. more hours of your life doing something you don't enjoy yeah there was, i'm not going to name names but there was somebody who i, who I follow on twitter and um they'd bought the avengers um the square enix one that came out earlier this year and they weren't happy with it, but yet they were putting like at, at least thirty hours of their time into that game, Jesus. consistently playing it. And like, I've I've not played it myself, but I've seen videos of it, and it does seem a bit repetitive. And I just can't imagine why they would like just continue to just keep doing it if they're not getting anything out of it. I, I'm totally with yeah. you on that still, and it does boggle my mind. It's kind of weird as well. Like, we know Stern's going to write about Animal Crossing in the future, but I'm just thinking when I got Animal Crossing, which came out like the day of lockdown, so it was like kind of perfect timing. I never really played Animal Crossing before, so it was kind of new to me, but I got, I think I got over 100 hours out of it. But I know people who have hit the 1,000 hour mark in that game, but mm. there was a point I got to Animal Crossing, I, was like, I, I feel like I was treating it as a job. I know, like, some people know what I mean. <laughs> it's like, I'm getting up and it's like, oh, I need to do this because that so fish fair. is going to disappear. I need to do this. That's so fair. I was like, 
I, 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 I had to quit it because I was like, at this point, I feel like I'm doing it to like it was like fear of missing out in a way, which worked in Nintendo's favour because I know so many people who have no interest in gaming bought a Switch for Animal Crossing and they've never touched it. Everything since. you just so, said is what yeah. I pitched to Kyle for my Animal Crossing feature on issue three. <laughs> it's so funny, you, like you literally took the words out of my mouth. There you go. This is why I like Stardew Valley better. <laughs> I'm championing that game, but yeah, there's I, a th- yeah. there's a good piece actually by um Lucy on on the play site about uh, Animal Crossing and how it's kind of like a debt simulator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely, yeah, hundred percent. But then I, it, it's then the games. I mean, I, this is weird because I I paid for Modern Warfare and then Warzone is free. But what we'll, we'll, I'll treat it as if I played Warzone for free. That's the game I've spent the most hours on in the last I don't know two or three years. I've spent almost ten days with it, which not a shame tip that but you know it's and then that's a it's a free game technically and to activision's credit there's actually not really any pay to win elements in it um yeah it doesn't feel as like when i went to play fortnite the other day i was like i feel like i if you don't have skins in fortnite you feel like i don't know you just feel like low level <laughs> don't you like oh everyone's got iron man i'm sitting here with default skin <laughs> from five seasons ago <laughs> i've got john wick yeah i could never no, I just, i'm just so crap at it i've got i've got jigsaw in modern warfare that's as far as my <laughs> i can put my money but no yeah it's it's a tough one even you mentioned avengers when it came out in the news this week that avengers lost a lot of money for square enix it was not a success yep and i'm guessing that was a you know counting how much it probably cost to get the license off marvel they, they made three million um, they yeah. lost 63 million Oh, Oof. yikes! But then that's, that's, a, that's a lot know, of money. That's probably because the game isn't good, though, isn't it? Like, then I think it reflects really. <laughs> you don't have to. I've not played it, but as you were saying, Sam, like even if you watch gameplay of Avengers for twenty minutes, you just like something doesn't look, you know. And I know a lot of people enjoy it. It seems like people can enjoy it therapeutically. It's got this kind of, I don't know. It's like this repetitive nature to it, which some games can nail. But it just for an Avengers game, it seems they drop the ball. So. If you're going to spend that much money, you've got to make sure you get it right, I guess. I saw um, early on Twitter, actually, that in the new remaster of Spider-Man, um, they've removed a line of dialogue where if you take a photo of the Avengers Tower, it like, comments on how they're in like, on the West Coast or something, like solving uh-huh. crimes or whatever. Uh, apparently, they've removed that because, obviously, the Avengers in, in the Square Enix game were in San Francisco, and I don't think they want any kind of affiliation <laughs> <laughs> with that oh, game. No. So I don't know whether it is to do with that, but it does seem too coincidental that they match up. Like if that. you want a, a yeah, good Avengers game, go play Marvel Ultimate Alliance three on the Switch. Like, <laughs> it's yeah. funny that Square Enix, like the king of JRPGs, couldn't make a good RPG brawler with five characters or like six characters or whatever. But Koei Tecmo <laughs> did it with like the entire MCU. And all the characters and stuff. But anyway, the comments again are going to be like, oh, they talked about the topic on the first <laughs> two minutes for 10 seconds. <laughs> uh, by the way, skip to hour two till when they get back on time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh, yeah, back to Xbox is still in there. Uh, Ratley points out. <laughs> uh, yeah, we found out this week, um, apart from. I don't. I don't want to harp on the negatives of it too much, but it does seem like there's a lot of things cropping up about it. Like we've mentioned, there's not really any games exclusivity-wise that are worth your time. I mean, it depends on the person, but like personally, I don't really see um, from that point of view. And then we've also found out you can play ping pong um, with an <laughs> Xbox yep. uh, Series X this week as well. I think that is pretty cool, though. To be fair, I think what a lot of people expected when Xbox started acquiring all these studios was that the start of of next gen or xbox series x or whatever was going to be filled with all these games but i think um the ramifications of that aren't going to really hit until a couple years down the line like with um psychonauts and the new fable and stuff like that whatever else they're working on yeah you'd think that like microsoft would have learned their lesson kind of the PlayStation last generation dominated them. Obviously, there were other factors going into that, and there was the, the secondhand game stuff. And but one of the most constant, like constant criticisms of Xbox during the last generation was there's no games to play. 
there's just nothing like games pass i mean i, I say i don't have any affiliation like i am definitely more of a playstation fan but i've had xbox in the past I had a 360 but the reason i moved over to xbox one was playstation had games to back up and i was hoping like i had before all the consoles were announced i was like i could go either way like i had i wasn't just i'm getting ps5 because but there's just you know like you're seeing your cool fables coming but I, to be honest fable hasn't been good in about what 15 Since years the first game they just keep <laughs> Yeah, so they keep dropping it like, God, Fable 3, what a masterpiece that is. But it's even, I was watching um, Unbox Therapy's kind of versus video between them, and it's just one of the things that stuck out to me is, okay, I'm going to try the PS5, puts on Miles Morales, puts on Astro's Playroom, and it's like, okay, let's try the Xbox, and he puts on Forza 4, and it's like, okay, Forza 4 is a game that you've been able to play for two years, okay, night and nice, it, it loads quicker and it looks better. But you can play it on a PC if you've got it. But I get some people don't, you know, a lot of people don't have PCs. But for me, at least, it's like now that I've got a somewhat capable PC with access to Games Pass, there's just no reason for me to jump on to Xbox. A hype is such a, like, infectious tool game companies can use. And the best way to do that is, yes, people can feel very left out and others can hype up the fact that they have a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. But really, it's it's the games that people get hyped for. It's like, wow, everyone is playing Demon Souls right now, and I literally cannot play it unless I get a PS Five. That's gonna that's gonna drive someone yeah. to get a PS Five. It, it's the fear of missing out. Exactly, isn't it? and and like you said, Kyle, yeah, you can play four to four or whatever, but like it's two years old. Like it's not new. Nobody's getting hyped over that. Sure, people like the the flashy graphics and stuff, but that's not. It's just not enough. And uh, like, I used to be such a huge, huge Xbox fan and I, I love the company, but it's just, they need to do better with games. They need to have more exclusives. I, and I, I have game pass. I barely use it. It, It's a good service, but at the same time, it's like when I got it, like I first got it a couple months ago and it's like, well, if, I already played most of these games somewhere else and at the same time I like physical copies of my games so it's like uh, mm. I'm a bit hesitant to start a save file on something that might not be there in 5-10 years when I go back to it see I think Games yeah. Pass is so good for like, a certain like uh, set of people because I know people I work with like oh I never got the chance to play Red Dead Redemption 2 and it went on to Games Pass mm-hmm. and that's kept me busy forever so like you were saying, I went on Game Pass today, I was like, oh, what can I play? And it's like, it's either stuff I'm just not interested in playing because it's so niche, or it's like, I've played that years ago, it's third party stuff. And then the first party stuff that is there, like Gears of War, again, just really struggle for Gears of War or Halo 5 to interest mm-hmm. me anymore. I do think it's kind of odd how they haven't got as many kind of flagpole launch titles available um, for like the, the big launch of their new console. I mean, at the time when the PS3 and the Xbox 360 came out, I was kind of in like denial of which one clearly won the generation. Was, I mean, I was a PS3 guy, but it was cl- clearly Xbox 360 dominated yeah. that entire era. They had they had the games. Xbox Live was absolutely popping between everyone you would talk to, and like I think obviously Sony shot themselves in the foot when Even they released just, like, the, the operating PS3. system of the Xbox just blew the, like the Sony PS3 yeah. operating system is horrible. Yeah, d- Devs always said that the PS3 was so hard to develop for because of of the operating system and stuff like that. So you don't love the dashboard with multiple multiple tabs that you nope. scroll up and down mm-hmm. on all the time. It was certainly quiet. I can give it that. <laughs> my Xbox became a jet engine, not as bad as my PS4. But I picked up a PS3 at the very end of its life cycle because I was like. I can get it dirt cheap, and I really want to play Metal Gear. So I literally got it to play Metal Gear Solid Four and Uncharted. <laughs> and I'm happy. I, did. I mean, it's a, it's a great. Class. I still use PSVs like my Blu-ray player. It's an amazing Blu-ray yeah. player. It's better than the PS4. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just Xbox were, you know, they were kings in that generation. You just couldn't stop them. So it's it's still a shock that the Sony scraped it back as much as they have. Yeah, I think like we're saying, a lot of that is down. Like not necessarily to the console itself, as as oppressive as that might be, but it is down to the launch titles. I mean, Stone was saying you've got Demon Souls remastered coming out. We've touched upon Miles Morales, and I'm sure there's more to come as well. Even stuff that you can pick up on other consoles. Bugs I mean, snacks. <laughs> yeah, bug snacks. <laughs> 
um and assassin's creed has just come out this week as well and i'm sure a lot of people will be kind of saving that to be like their next um kind of like first gen game if you will so yeah i, f- I think they've kind of got it down in that um, regard so i am surprised xbox kind of dropped the ball on it but um from what i have seen of the actual console though i've been impressed with kind of, kind of a lot of stuff especially with the series x rather than the the s um the feature in specific way can kind of pause the games and move between them i mean i don't know whether it's something in actuality that you'll use a lot Mm. because i kind of play at one game at a time rather than like jumping between them so i don't know whether it's something i'd personally use but it's a cool feature nonetheless and an impressive showcase of the hardware but uh yeah i I just don't want it to seem like we're being too negative about no, no, it's like, the I hate, Xbox. I hate, like, cause I really like my, like, still I'm saying Xbox, I think, as a company, have Sony beat on in terms of communication, how they talk with their fan base. They're so, yeah. you know, transparent with what they're doing with their console, why they're doing it, where Sony like to keep everything secretive. And they've got, like, talking back to PlayStation VR, the PlayStation VR situation on PS5 is a complete shit show that still. <laughs> Like, it's only today they've come out like, like, this is how it works, 100%, by the way. They've been getting asked for ages, like, is there going to be PlayStation Vive, PlayStation VR games? And like, we don't know, we're not going to tell you. (laughs) Just tell people so they know, like, do I need to sell my headset? Do I want to... Like, you can use your headset, but they won't tell you what capacity until yesterday they've said, um, so, like, Blood uh, Blood and Truth, which is a PlayStation 4 VR game, is getting a PS5 update. That's cool. They need more of that. But... I, I get without, you know, pushing them down too much. It's for me what's confused the Xbox Series S when it got announced. I was like, that's a really good idea. It's like, you know, really low budget next gen console. And my friend, he traded in, I think he's ex, he's original Xbox. Uh, it's like the fucking titles Xbox <laughs> One X. He traded that in, and then it, so he got like the Series S for a hundred pound. But I just. For someone like him, so he sent me, he's like, oh, that's me ran out of storage, and he's got Halo Master Chief Collection on it, Halo Five. Control, Man of Medan, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, he's out of space. It's like, that's, that's your next gen gaming machine. Like, I just, wait, what about, I, apart from the load times and stuff, like, it, that's what you were saying has impressed me the most. Like, the loading times on the Series X, especially, are really impressive. I, but it's just not enough. It's like an Xbox 1.25 in a way. I'm not going to lie. A couple days ago, I, I kind of shook my head at the whole load time shtick because i was like who cares that the load times are fast like load times are fast in games now but (laughs) i beat final fantasy 7 remake on hard mode this weekend (laughs) and the last boss fight against sephiroth is incredibly hard there is um a cut scene right before that fight that if you lose you have to see it again and then halfway through that fight, there is <laughs> another cutscene, and it is faster to watch the cutscenes than it is to press pause and skip them. <laughs> I was so pissed while doing this boss fight, not because I had to do it like 35 times, but because I had to watch those cutscenes so many times. I hated it. And that's when it clicked for me. I was like, okay, we need faster load times. I get it now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think it's going to be really cool to see in like Spider Man those oh, modern yeah. times. I think I still don't know how true this is and how much of this was just it was lucky what they showed, but it was when they showed um going from a warehouse fighting scene, which in the first game you'd go to the warehouse, it would load, and then you would come at the warehouse, it load again. But then they showed this bit of gameplay where it was practically instantaneous, that there was no loading screen. I'm curious if that was legit or that was just you know something that was in the game but even outside of that the loading screens being gone for a game like that is it's cool to see but in with games like assassin's creed valhalla although they load up quickly you've still got to get past the 40 seconds of unskippable ubisoft stuff like see Watch Dogs legion on the computer takes about a minute and a half to get into the game not because it's slow at loading the loading screen's quick but you got to get through all these health and safety warnings from ubisoft stupid <laughs> ubisoft logos and it's like that's not going to ever be changed by loading screens. I think we're going to see first party games are the real benefit, like benefiters of that. It's funny you mentioned Watchers actually, because I was thinking about that. Um, when loading times, I know you've played it on the PC. Um, I've been playing it on the PS4 at the minute, and I've just got a standard PS4, mm-hmm. um, not even a slim one like the the OG one. Uh, and the loading times on that are, a, it's a bit of a problem. Like you, you start a mission, you get to the location. 
for some reason it's got to load something and it takes a, a good minute and a half to get into that next bit. And it's like, what what exactly am I waiting for? I'm waiting to get into this next bit so I can run down a corridor or press triangle to open the door and then watch another cutscene. Like, yeah. it's just, it's ridiculous. So I am curious to see stuff like that improved. But like you say, with um, actual kind of titles and stuff like that, that, that'll that never change. Yeah. What, what games, or what do you think Microsoft has to do? Like, because they keep, like, cool fables coming, like, you'll have another Gears of War, but I just feel like, they need to bring something new that's going to really blow people away as an exclusive. And I know they've bought Bethesda, but we yeah. still don't know if that's going to be an exclusive thing. Like Bethesda are still pretty. They're like, oh, we'll see how the market is. If we'll... I feel like we won't see Elder Scrolls Six as an Xbox exclusive. I just don't see. No, not at all. See, no chance, especially with the PC install base. For I I disagree. I think it will be an exclusive. I think they're not saying that right now for PR reasons, to be honest. Because yeah, really. I, why buy a company for like what was it like six billion dollars or something and not get their yeah. most sought after exclusive right and it is a bit strange that a company like bethesda would sell themselves out to like limit themselves um money wise that way but at the same time it's like microsoft is the most is like the richest company in the world next to amazon or something Again, just figuratively speaking, but it's just if, quite clear. If Elder Scrolls Six comes out and it's a game, it's a Game Pass exclusive, then that is huge. But Elder Scrolls Six is not going to come out. For, I don't even think Elder Scrolls Six is going to come out in the next five years. If I'm being honest, just for how incompetent Bethesda are as a game <laughs> studio. There's, and if it does, and it goes to Games Pass, PC, and Xbox exclusive, then that's amazing. I think that will be something that people are like, holy shit, I need to get an Xbox. But I think like it is to do with PR if that is the case. I think they would be super hesitant to say that because there'll be so many, especially like the modern community who love modern Bethesda games, but like, I don't want this game to be tied into Game Pass because it's just going to, I can imagine it'd be even harder to mod. Don't know, I'm not in the modern community, but I can just imagine there'd be a huge backlash. I don't that. think it'll come to just Game Pass, but I think that, I like you, like we just said, it'll, Microsoft and Xbox need something that big, big like wow factor and elder scrolls 6 is that because like you said yeah um, my comment on it was okay i'll get an xbox if they bring back fable and they're doing that but a lot of people need something a lot bigger than fable or forza or, or halo for the 10th time and I, I i just think elder scrolls is that in my opinion but again like who knows people <laughs> People fuck up all the time. <laughs> no, I, I definitely think you're onto something there. Whether whether it's Elder Scrolls or something else, they do need. It just has to be that one title that just grabs everybody mm. and and gets everybody. And like, yeah, that's why I want an Xbox. I want to play that game so I can be in on the conversation with it, and we can all kind of bond over it. And I think originally, like with the like going back to the 360 again, they had Halo Three, and like that was an incredibly massive mm. game like skyrocketed um just reputation around that they just they just need something akin to that that will just draw people to it and i don't know now i'm hearing you talk about like kind of this bethesda deal it, it, i think you might be onto something to be honest now i'm, I'm trying to like, think about it and the cogs are turning you might be on something with that one it, from what i've noticed the main criticism of xbox is they need games they need exclusives like we've said here multiple times and that's just it that's just the game that's that's the big enough game that isn't halo or or the same old gears of war like that is the that is like getting grand theft auto as an exclusive in my opinion yeah. like it's it's just as big i'm trying to remember i'm thinking back to when i got my xbox 360 in 2008 and I think the four games I got at launch were Mirror's Edge, which wasn't an exclusive, Gears of War, which was. I think Dead Rising 1 was an exclusive. I'm pretty sure. I know the later sequels weren't. On 360? And yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. The first and second. And Left 4 Dead, yeah. And Left 4 Dead was a PC and Xbox exclusive. And that, like, just that right away is like that wasn't obviously launch titles but you said that halo 3 halo 3 and halo dst and even halo reach were three of the, the best halo games ever made and now like halo halo 6 is the next one right 
I believe so. Yeah, and that's already Infinite. yeah, it's getting this backlash because it just doesn't. It looks terrible. There's all these people are leaving the team. It's not if it, if Halo Six was a launch title, I think that would have been because you see anytime there's. I mean, I hate like at the end of the day, console wars are stupid. Buy what you like, you know. It doesn't matter what you buy. Buy what makes you happy. But when you see like oh, I'm buying an Xbox, why is like to play what? I just if you had Halo Six, I think at least like that would be your easy thing to market. It's like Halo Six, you know, just like they did with Halo Three or Halo Infinite, whatever it's called. You know, new Halo game, it's huge gonna be hopefully awesome and that's why you need to buy an xbox but it's like okay you got forza again and gears of war 5 it just sony because it was quite a shock when they're like new spider-man's a launch title because when they initially it was just like holiday 2020 and then it later says like it's coming out on launch so is demon souls which i said this in the chat the other day like, the, the spider-man miles morales has got to be one of the most solid launch titles in quite a long time maybe yeah breath sure. of the wild as well just comes to mind that's a, a good segue well, that Kyle. Nintendo. Um, I just wanted to <laughs> to point out like um as I was saying about hype before and what Kyle just said, our entire work group chat is stuff like Miles Morales and Demon Souls and, and stuff like that. There's nothing from Xbox because everyone is seeing all these screenshots and this, this gameplay and they're sharing it and getting pe- other people excited and it's what is driving the conversation. And there, I literally, we haven't shared like a single game from Xbox in our work group chat. That's it. Yeah, it's like, and we want <laughs> I mean, to. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Wait, we want to talk. It's not really like, oh, get Xbox out of here. Fuck that. It's like, no, not at all. We want I'd to l- talk about just I'd love nothing. To be able to share but that. It's just the fact that the PlayStation exclusives are there. That like they're just yeah. there to yeah. talk about, and Xbox just isn't. Yeah, I mean, I know for a fact in in our chat, like, there's people who absolutely are, like going on Halo again. I know Tom, um, he absolutely adores that franchise. I'm sure you guys love it as well. And I bet if that was coming out now or fairly soon for for the new Xbox, like, we'd be spamming the hell out of that in the chat. Yeah, <laughs> and kind of reminiscing about old times on those games. So yeah, I think I think you're exactly right on that. It's just it's word of mouth, and especially in this kind of day and age where everything's digital and that's how we communicate it it has to have that drive and spider-man and demons especially spider-man like this people that's getting excited about the animations as he swings and stuff like that yeah it's like, that, <laughs> like that clip that's all it sent, takes it's just like that 30 second clips like that's so simple it's just but how like that i can't you know it's when i got like, the last of us 2 i was like oh, i can't wait to experience the story of the last of us 2 but like spider-man like, i can't wait to play it like just swing about and have fun with it it's, which was the same i'm surprised i'm excited as i am because i've got the first one sitting there as so i could go play it but no, it's not the same you need ps5 but uh just b- before we move on to nintendo i think because there's always a lot of debate if you know people are exclusives or you know people don't like exclusives because it segregates the market but like, exclusives are ultimately they're there to create competition it's just microsoft exactly they're yeah like their fight and the, they don't want it but i'm sure they do but sony are like Surprise! Sony are going as hard as ours. Like, okay, here's God of War, <laughs> Spider Man, Last of Us. But even their last year, Final Fantasy sixteen, the generation. Exactly. I know Final Fantasy seven remakes is coming out. I, I, I'm sure it's getting an Xbox release next year. I know it was only a timed exclusive, but by that point as well, it's like the kind of dust is settled with Final Fantasy seven remake. People are ready to play the next one. It's just, and that's only that's in the last year alone. Like four amazing games exclusives matter and i'm just it's a shame that microsoft maybe that's going to change maybe this they just want to get the consoles out there and focus on that but um yeah i just hope the approach changes because I, I i mean if i could afford it down the line i'd be happy to because I, I kept thinking about getting an xbox this whole generation yeah every generation I'm like i usually pick up whatever console i didn't get near the end i had the xbox 360 picked up the ps3 at the end but it's just I kept thinking about it. I was like, oh, it's on deal. It's only a hundred pound for digital edition. It was like, what? I did, there was just nothing I wanted to play in it apart from Xbox 360 games, which I've got a working 360. <laughs> but um, I did say to my partner, like I was tempted by the Series S just because of the price point. It's really yeah, yeah. competitive for like what you're getting. I know the hardware is a little bit of a downgrade compared to the main one, whereas kind of. <laughs> I don't mean to toot their own horn again, but with the PS5, yeah. with the, the the digital version, you're getting the exact same hardware just without a disk drive. Yeah. But um, I was tempted by the Series S, and I was tempted to try something new. But um, yeah, I just I I really hope Microsoft can just 
get a bit more wow factor as Sterling said earlier just in the next couple of months because I'd really like to see some big things from them, especially with the potential of um, working with like the EA pass that they've got as mm. well uh, and the best the, the Bethesda deal. Ugh, I just really hope they just I just need something from them. That's all I need. Just as a small tiny comment that can definitely be greatly dissected <laughs> is that Xbox needs to break into the Japanese market and work with Japanese developers because that was like their main falter with the Xbox 360 like there's been tons of articles done and documentaries about how Xbox fucked up their opportunity in the Japanese market back then but again that's it that's all I want to say (laughs) one more (laughs) side note Kyle mentioned earlier about uh, how transparent Xbox is and how uh, non-transparent PlayStation was being with VR I think that needs to be a whole discussion on another episode because man could I go on about transparency with game developers forever I think it's a huge issue like Kyle said they knew if they're making PS5 VR games by a week ago okay they knew <laughs> they just didn't want to yeah. say I think we can definitely touch upon that later when we jump onto as a uh, other topic <laughs> But before we do that, going back to Kyle's segue, Nintendo, where are they in the middle of all this? I mean, I know we've got the Switch and everything. I don't know whether this is true, but I read a few weeks ago that allegedly working on what is being dubbed as a Switch. That rumor has been going on literally since like the first half year the Switch was out. (laughs) I know it's been circulating a lot, but um, I don't know. I feel like with the new generation kind of launching, whether there is a bit of kind of ground to that, I don't know. Did you also read the... I read somewhere that Nintendo treated the Switch as a last-gen console or something. It was like... Because, I don't know, I, I like they consider it as, you know, this was the PS3, the Xbox. Or, no, so it was like, it was an in-between. It wasn't part of this generation, which is weird, because everyone thinks of the Switch, PS4, and uh, Xbox One. But they were yeah. considering it as like, I guess the Wii U, they just pretend didn't exist, which, fair enough, but I don't know, if a Switch Pro came out, because especially with the, the original Switch is still full price, and it's been out for, what, almost four years or something, you've still got to pay full price, but I think if they make a Switch Pro, it's going to be difficult for, I mean, it'll be, I don't know, just because if you release a game, is it going to be an exclusive to Switch Pro, is it going to be the case yeah. of, like, PS4 Pro, as in it just has certain enhancements, because I was hate to have to try and get rid of my switch already because they're giving up on it which would be i don't think they will because the install base for the switch is insane it'll i i project it'll outsell the the wii honestly really yeah uh i th- it just it just outsold the game boy next is the ds all right do you both have switches oh yeah I used to have the Switch Lite. Um, I only got rid of it because when I was moving out, I needed like the money and stuff, mm. like just to obviously save up. But um, I, I tell you what, like I, the Switch, I am really impressed by it. I think I do think it's a fantastic console just for what it offers, and I feel like it's always been that kind of Nintendo thing. It is a very inclusive console as well. Yeah. It's kind of all kind of like age groups. And I think that's a, a fantastic thing, especially at the minute where everyone's inside, because everybody, I know like the PS4 and Xbox, whatever, have titles that are more, I don't want to say family oriented, but like they are a bit more kind of geared towards younger people. Yeah. But um, the the Switch for sure is definitely an inclusive console. And I think like at the minute, uh, it's a great time to be, to have that console because everyone can just get together and play your kind of classic games like your Mario Kart and stuff like that. And then... I think the Switch has also been kind of a, a big hit with independent developers as well. Like, there's tons of titles in that market that you can get on the Switch. I, but Nintendo... Oh, sorry, Nico, Sterling. Um, what you said about it being more family-oriented, I think their first-party titles, absolutely. But that was the biggest criticism for Nintendo for years, and especially, especially yeah. with the Wii U, is like, okay, these are all... We're just getting first-party family oriented games <laughs> where are the more serious stuff where's the third party support and i think the switch will continue to do well and and defy expectations 
because they basically built upon every kind of criticism they've gotten besides like their online service and their infrastructure. <laughs> they definitely have not fixed that. But even just from the Wii U to the Switch, like, okay, the console gimmick is fantastic. Like the, the Wii U gamepad sucked, but the portability of the Switch is amazing. They have amazing third-party titles. They are knocking it out of the park with, with first party and a lot of series are getting like revitalized and a lot of people are are playing this and playing online despite the infrastructure like even this year with stuff like the last of us and final fantasy 7 and, and all the great exclusives animal crossing has just dominated like <laughs> dom really and it it uh it's been out for what six six months and it's and it's yep. less than a million away from being the best selling game on Switch, beating out Mario Kart. Yeah, Jeez. it's insane. <laughs> but and the, <sighs> Nintendo are kind of like they've heaven keeps getting on of them because they've they've got nothing in the pipeline now. Though they've went really quiet. You're still getting your third party stuff, and we've got no more Heroes Free in the way, and we're still seeing if Metroid's gonna ever come. But they've just kind of after Animal Crossing, which they've just went kind of radio silent. And that's why I guess the rumor mill does keep going. So oh, they must be working on a pro, is it? Or they're just letting things kind of settle because they don't need to do anything. Yeah. I mean, if if they're kind of comfortable at the moment, then I don't see why um they, they would exactly feel the need to kind of push it a bit further, but they could be working on stuff in the background. But um, I am curious to see where they will sit as we kind of dig into the PS5 and the Xbox, new Xboxes um, further down the line in, in a year's time or so. I'm curious to see where they will sit in kind of the pantheon of like the next generation because, like you say, they, they do have the titles and still makes a great point as well. Like They used to get criticised um, for being a bit more um, too family oriented and now they've kind of branched out and they've got the other titles like I never thought. In my life, I'd be playing Doom on a Nintendo console, <laughs> but um, they are I'm ripping people apart on a Switch at one o'clock in the morning. But um, yeah, I, I'm cu- I'm really curious to see where they're gonna sit. I just uh, I'm not sure what they'll do because as Sterling like points out I, as well as you both point out. Sorry, go what ahead. are they uh, what are they actually up to? <laughs> uh, I think it it not to say it doesn't matter what the competition is doing, but they just do their own thing. Like Nintendo has always just done their own thing. Next gen for PlayStation and, and Xbox has always been about upgrading and, and being pretty and, and having all these flashy yeah. games, but Nintendo has never focused on, on hardware and, and being flashy and being pretty. Like a lot of their games still run at like 720 P or 1080 P. Meanwhile, 4K is becoming like the standard base. Um, and again, this this doesn't. I I do think the competition does matter. And like Kyle said earlier, absolutely. Do ex- ex- exclusivity means competition, and competition means that these game developers are, are only going to have to try harder to make better games. But I just think from a from a a pure game point nintendo is is just doing so well look at how many breath of the wild clones we're finally getting like genshin <laughs> impact and immortals phoenix rising or whatever the frig it's called yeah that is an interesting position for them to be in and um it, it kind of le- leads me on to the next part of the discussion actually because you said earlier about um how they're kind of revitalizing, uh, you both said, like, are they revitalizing other franchises onto the Switch, like they're kind of remaking games and whatnot and porting them over. And we said on the last podcast like, about kind of legacy titles and oh, um, boy. where they ca- <laughs> exactly <laughs> where they kind of stand at the moment. And with these new consoles, again, do we think we're going to see that expanded upon and where exactly is the interest in legacy titles at the moment it's such a a broad subject as well to kind of rip apart i I would rather they just they're not gonna because all stars sold so well i would just rather they released a nintendo 64 virtual console or something just they can even if it's not going to be their subscription service they've got with nintendo and super nintendo 
just offer the games like they did on the Wii and the Wii U because as much as I'm sure the next one's going to be Zelda for the anniversary, it's going to probably be, I don't know, Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time and Jaws Mask, maybe. Maybe they'd probably try and charge full price for Skyward Sword. But it's, I don't know, I feel pretty burnt by <laughs> the price of All-Stars. Not just, just the, is, the price, the yeah. whole game. Like. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's a terrible <laughs> way. Like, there's nothing... <laughs> The main menu feels slapped together. There's nothing. Like if you just, you know, if you take like, look at like Crash Bandicoot and Spiral, which comes from Activision, a company that gets slack for doing the laziest stuff all the time. But like, the Spiral the Dragon Remaster trilogy is now my preferred way to play that, and they're three of my favorite games ever made. And I would now choose to play those rem like those remakes, because I think they're like the best versions of the game. But there's just nothing in the Mario collection. It's like, oh yeah, this is. A fair price for what you've done. You haven't even changed the ratio of sixty four. Galaxy looks amazing. Like I say, Super Mario Galaxy is stunning on it. Give them that much. It looks like a new game on it. But it's unlike when we spoke about Konami on the last episode, who seem completely blind to what they've got at their fingertips of money. Nintendo know exactly what they've got, and they know who their fan base is, and they know they've got this reputation, and they're going to exploit it forever. But but that's the thing. It's like they know what they got, but they're not. They're doing the bare minimum when it's when it's Nintendo. Like everyone's childhood is centered around Nintendo and Pokemon and Mario and and, and stuff like that. And they're just releasing this bare, like you said, a bare minimum menu slapped together. Nothing but a soundtrack on it collection for the 35th anniversary. And I just I don't think it's enough. At first, I loved it. Like I was so I was happy to pay ninety dollars for for the 3d all-stars collection but then it's like eh, i don't really want to play super mario 64 it's aged poorly super mario sunshine isn't the greatest like you said and and mario galaxy is still amazing but it's like 90 dollars yeah yes it's, it's just... amazing that you can play these games in handheld mode and you don't have to buy all these old consoles and and stuff like that for to play these old games but it's ugh, ugh, just such a disappointment <laughs> it seems like you can feel the disdain in yeah your voice. i'm just like i'm looking like what hd i'm looking at my like game collection like what hd collection i paid for in the past and it's like paid for like kingdom hearts 1.5 and 2 point whatever the fuck it is <laughs> so even they never came out at such a ridiculous price and they're they weren't remakes but they were full you know upscaled they looked like kingdom hearts 2 still looks great for its age and it's why is such why are they getting away with it and that's another thing with the switch it's like i know they've, they've and nintendo have quite a good relationship with screen enix it's like where are the rest of these ports where is kingdom hearts collection that's a game that would be perfect on the switch and it's just not there but we've got the rhythm game coming out it's like what why is that the only Kingdom Hearts game we're getting on the switch because like, you can take my money i've already bought final fantasy 7 and 10 for the 20th time so give me like the Kingdom Hearts all in one package and I'll buy it again. But I don't know. It's, and then it's the, t the other tough thing is with games. So for example, like um, Bioshock Collection just came out, I think this year on the Switch. But that's a mm. game you can get on your PS4 for five pound. And I imagine it's probably quite <laughs> cheap for you as well. So it's probably like $10 or something. It's on mm -hmm. sale. And it comes out in Switch four years later. And it's up oh, 60 pound full price, please. It's like how I get it's on a different platform, but but it's like, how can you justify that? It's even like Resident Evil 4 HD, £30 full price when that came out. It's like, come on, that that game's seven ninety nine on PlayStation, like full price. It's just, it's insane and I hate it because they still get my money. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm so angry. I definitely think Nintendo are kind of the most guilty for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. When I got my Switch and I was looking at um, the store and I was like, you know, what what games do I really love that I can pick up again, like, for the sake of kind of the portability aspect of it? And I can't remember what I, I saw, what was it? I think it might have been Dark Souls Remastered and I got that on the PS4 for like 15 quid. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the Switch, it's like, yeah, it's £50. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? It's just, I don't get it. But I get it, maybe... <laughs> you can get the kingdom hearts all in i'm sorry i'm just gonna keep going with this <laughs> kingdom hearts all in one package that is every single kingdom hearts game ever made for 25 pound on the playstation 4 
what the fuck? If that was on Switch, it'd be like $300. Exactly. <laughs> 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 I know, it's because I know that probably is going to come out on Switch. And it's gonna, it's, I wouldn't be shocked if it's more than 60 It would not surprise me, though. Yeah, this is nine games, £120 for that, please. I'm like, yep, cool. Sounds like a good deal. It's like, I just, I can't take it anymore. I can't, you know what? Fuck your Switch Pro. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I've had enough. I'm so. Mario has destroyed me. Uh, oh, I think Sterling makes. I was, go on, I was just going to say, after playing Mario Sunshine again, yeah, it just destroyed me. I hate that <laughs> game. I'm sorry. I, I was trying to, like, like, oh, I get people like, I do not understand how a single soul on this planet thinks Mario Sunshine is a well made game. I. I like it. I like oh it a God. lot, but it's what is wrong? No, with it's you? one of those games where it's like I very much understand why people do not like this. <laughs> it probably didn't help that I started with Galaxy first and went back the mm-hmm. way. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> this one. I don't. Sorry, that was had to. I feel like I just come on the podcast <laughs> and vent for Coming a minute. Have like a mental break. That's why I got you on here. That's what I'm here bit for. Of therapy for you. Yeah, I feel quite. I feel bad after that. Yeah, <laughs> Play some there. That's thing, yeah. But the reason I love the Switch so much, as much as I just like screamed about it, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII on my PC and I've been modding it. I was like, oh, okay, I'm gonna make it look better, but I'm like, I'd still rather sit in my bed and play a worse version of Final Fantasy VII or anything like that. I, it's just, I never use my Switch on the TV unless I've got friends over. I'm always playing it handheld. Mm-hmm. To me, it's a handheld console that just happens to have the luxury of being able to play it on the TV. But no matter what the game is, doesn't like graphics aside, especially RPGs, RPGs are so good on the switch if persona 5 comes to the switch you will never hear from me again because <laughs> i keep going to place persona 5 i'm like i just wish i could sit in my like my bed and play this like fall asleep even like i played phoenix Wright on the switch which i've been trying to get into phoenix Wright my whole life and then playing on the switch was amazing even though it's just sitting reading a book but i just like and then they've not released the this we're still waiting on a second phoenix Wright trilogy it's like come on there's just so many opportunities to make sure the switch because I seem to go through periods like I'll play my Switch so much for a month straight and then leave it and not play it for a while. Whereas there's just, there seems to be these lulls for the Switch. It's like, oh, amazing game comes out, loads of third party stuff, then nothing. And then it comes back and then nothing again. There's just not that consistency for me. Mm. I, I was just going to say, like Sterling said earlier, um, Nintendo definitely knows who kind of like their audience are. And you both said that as well. Like who, the, who doesn't know what games they want. And then it was making me think like, with titles I'd like to see kind of make a resurgence. I said on the last episode, like, just put Max Payne 2 on the PlayStation <laughs> Store, please, so I can play that game again. And, like, <sighs> Rockstar must know people want to play those games. Like, I, I, I'd even buy Max Payne 3 again if they put that on, like, available, because that game is super, super good, and I love the hell out of it, but... <sighs> A lot of my frustration with kind of the leg- legacy title kind of topic is just from the business point of view, I don't get how they're not looking at their fan bases and seeing the kind of outcry and the profitability from it to release these titles. I mean, it's it's a weird example to use, but like the kind of the, the whole Snyder Cut thing, mm-hmm. you had, whether you, like, you're into that thing or not, on uh, where you stand on Zack Snyder, but like the, the demand for that was incredible and it took like four years for it to happen but they did listen and now Zack Snyder's got 80 million dollars in his pocket to shoot new material and finish off this film that was supposed to come out brilliant um years ago so um I, I don't know I, I see that and think does that mentality apply to games as well yeah it's like I'm not, it's I still can't believe we fought for so long I don't I never thought it was gonna happen but there was this rumor of literally until like two months ago the PlayStation 5 was going to be this legacy console that could play PS1 to PS4 I game. never believed that for a second. Yeah, like, I never, I was like, there's no <laughs> way Sony's going to do that. But, again, it's just, it shows how much the, like, the want for that is. That Because, obviously, Sony released their PS1 Mini and it was a complete disaster. It was terrible. Nobody bought it. <laughs> and, but, and I get it's a, it's a difficult thing to do, although Xbox are kind of doing a backwards compatible thing. But I guess the difference is a lot of these games, people are like, oh, I want PS1 and PS2. It's, it's, you know, it's exclusives and stuff like that, but those rights have moved to, to different hands. But it just goes to show how much people, I think, in whatever distant world, if PS5 did come in, it's like, you can play PS1 to PS5 games. I, there's no, Xbox wouldn't even have any horse in this race, I don't think, because it's just, 
whatever capacity that would be if that would have been the disc tray or you could just had buy ps1 games it's just something people are wanting it's weird like spotify figured out i think i can't i might have mentioned this last time it's like spotify figured out you got to stop game piracy uh, music piracy by offering a service that offers the same thing as piracy <laughs> but it's easier because essentially spotify was limewire and napster and stuff like that but you pay for it yeah and it's, and it's you know you don't get viruses but there's just nothing for that for legacy content for games. It's just you have to hope that a studio is going to re-release a game in HD, or you're never going to play it again. Like I've got my copies of Spiral One to Three on the PS One. They barely work. So it's like, is that it? I'm never going to get to play them again. I've just got as much as I like the remake. Would be nice to have the option. So is the only option to pirate them? It's like you don't want to pirate, but it's like there's no alternatives. Um, to answer your question, Sam. Um, and I'm quoting, uh, Mike Bithel from Bithel Games on this. If you guys have ever watched, like, Play, Watch, Listen with, uh, Alana mm-hmm. Pierce and, and Troy Baker and Austin Wintry. Basically, um, Alana Pierce brought up about the Mass Effect, like, HD collection. Like, why haven't they done it? Why don't companies just do this, bring their old content and collections or HD remasters? And because he's a game developer, Mike Bithell said, basically game developers would rather take the gamble of doing something new or creating like a Mass Effect 4, which they haven't, <laughs> um, so that they can get more profit of it. Because basically from these HD collections, other than something like um, the Mario 3D All-Stars, they don't always sell incredibly well. They usually obviously make profit and and um are good for the company but they'd rather make like a hundred million dollars than 25 million dollars by taking the safe road and boy do i ever think that's wrong and i i i just think it it's backwards and and i don't know that's my opinion yeah so i I don't want to have to keep my ps3 and my ps2 forever exactly and take up space but I just like this <laughs> i love like sometimes you got to boot up dog's life from the ps2 like sometimes that's <laughs> just got to happen is dog's life 2 ever gonna get remastered absolutely not it's not gonna happen and i pay money for that yep i i, I would really get by yeah, let's like, start the remaster. movement maybe it will i'm gonna probably like shoot myself in the foot saying that eventually it'll be like when they did shack fu <laughs> remaster i was like yeah let's, let's do dog's life for some reason but Know, now just, you can yeah. use the shitty mechanic in 60 frames per <laughs> Play second. Play it in VR. <laughs> Be the dog. But yeah, it's just... I, 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 I don't know. I don't want to have to keep... Which is the one reason if I got an Xbox One. I was like, yeah, I don't have to keep my Xbox 360 where it is anymore. I can get rid of it. Yeah. Right, I can put it away in storage or whatever. But it's like, nope. I still have to... Thankfully, I can get rid of the PS4. Which is, I don't like saying that in front of it. It's probably getting quite upset. and it knows it's weeks coming. <laughs> it's going to be gone soon. But I know I cleaned it earlier. I cleaned it. Oh, boy. Got, got the cotton buds out as well. Went in all That's the like taking your dog <laughs> for a long car ride before <laughs> you have to put him down. Yeah, I'm going to play the shit out of Warzone next Wednesday night until it's at the point of about to explode. And I'm like, there you go. You, to, you can now go. I did. Yeah, but. Yeah, that's sorry. That took that conversation completely off tangent. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is I just want to play old games all the time, but. Yeah. Um. It's weird because yeah. we were just saying how new games are the reason consoles win. So yeah, it's weird because we were saying Xbox have anything going for it, but they do have that. They they've got legacy content in a way. You know, you can play Halo One still. Look at that! We've come full circle. I know. Look, see, we told you we liked Xbox. You just had to wait. You just had to get. <laughs> we all had to go through therapy <laughs> to have a bit of a breakdown. I don't mean to take over, but I wrote down a bunch of comments or or talking points that I wanted to bring up because I know you guys are gonna have have um good good opinions or comments on it Let's but do this. um so with nintendo and and definitely zelda games get more updated ports than something like mario and with mm. um even with link's awakening the the remake of it so the the company that makes this game is called grezzo and like i've said they've done most of the zelda ports like on 3ds and stuff i think more developers need to needs to have these relationships with other developers so um 
don't buy out the company or something like that, but find a, a, a studio who's willing to remake or remaster your games because of again if i was a developer and nintendo came up to me and they're like hey can you just work on an hd remaster of of ocarina of time for the switch who's not going to drop what they're doing and, and work on that right yeah and then it means that um the team at nintendo doesn't have to take away any resources from new games they're working on even though it doesn't even take that many resources as, as far as I know, like uh, from what I've looked at. Um, and also what a lot of studios do is they usually try to make an internal team of people who just work on this. But then because crunch culture is so bad, they always take the people off it to work on the new game anyway. And it always gets like sidelined. But it's, it's... Sorry, yeah, when you go sorry. No, I was just gonna say, like, do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Like, what? does it present any problems? Because uh, with writing, even with like articles and stuff, it's like I get very possessive of my writing, and and some people might might not be comfortable giving an entire game or IP to a second studio and just being like, hey, just work on it. No, I think that's yeah. definitely a good a good thing. I mean, as soon as you said it, like the first thing that came to my mind as of, as of recently. Um, was was Activision and Vicarious Visions yeah. with the um the Tony Hawk remaster, which I think was was fantastic. Because they had Crash before that, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and um, I didn't really play play much of the the Crash um, not the racing one anyway. I played a bit They're of the. They're both uh, great. Yeah, but um, the, the Tony Hawk remaster have sunk quite a like, a lot of an embarrassing amount of time into since that came out. <laughs> Because I'm 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 a bit of a of a haul for the Tony Hawk. Games. <laughs> I really want. I hope Underground and one one and two are the next ones. Go oh on my that. god! I, I, don't well, Tony Hawk's Underground is like <laughs> my favorite of the entire franchise, and I still have my PS2 disc from 2003, and it still works. <laughs> Me too. And but that'd be so. I, good. I, I, and I've got um. I don't know if you've heard of it. Um. Have you heard of Fog Pro yeah. on the PC? I've got that as well, so I can go play that on like the big screen and everything. Oh, uh, Tony Hawk's another podcast. I am obsessed with. <laughs> skating games and everything but yeah i definitely think it's a good thing to have those relationships especially if it really if it leads to those kind of fruitful projects like tony hawk where the developers and the team working at clearly have that passion like for example they went back and found the original code that neversoft were used for the engine and they had to tweak it a bit obviously to update it but the fact they went back and actually thought you know what pro skater 5 was a pretty dog shit yep. <laughs> let's save this franchise <laughs> so yeah I, I think it's great if if people are doing it and i'd, I'd personally like to see more of that well it's like even sony have now got this with well, they've had it for a while with blue point they've just became they originally like blue point were like the remaster team you wanted a game remastered you went to blue point to get metal gear solid god of war and now they've stepped that up with shadow of the colossus and demon soul has been full on hd remakes like shadow of colossus remake was so Beautiful. good as a game i've wanted to get in for forever and they just, they, I don't know, it's so commendable how, and, and they didn't sell it at full price either. It was like a £30 game, Shadow of the Colossus as well. I think a lot of these, even Activision, as evil as they are, they sold Tony Hawk, Spyro and Crash all at discounted prices. About half, it was almost like just over half price, unlike, you know, Nintendo where they're charging full price, even other companies, stuff like that. But yeah, it's, I think, like Blue Point, they've realised this is what, I'm sure they would be good at making original content, but they're, amazing at taking remaster stuff kind of like vicarious visions as well and even like um toys for bob who did the spiral trilogy they've now been given crash 4 and it seems they're going to take well i mean i hope spiral gets to continue as well but that, that's also like a, a whole other can of worms as well is when like crash bandicoot 4 came out that that was a full price game but it was still only slightly longer than i think i don't know how long it was but i don't think you know it wasn't like a fair hour game or anything like that it was like maybe eight hour crash bandicoot game and they decide to charge full price for that. So that's, you know, it gets a bit, gets difficult there. But I think, yeah, they should just have these teams that are not churning them out. You don't want it to be, you don't want Silent Hill 2 and 3 HD collection. You don't want that situation again. Mm. Which I've been reading, I've been watching a lot of videos. There's a really interesting video on that, 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 that game's insane. How that, that remaster came out in the condition that it did. <laughs> um, yeah, unre I think like the director of the original Silent Hill 2 was tweeting as the game was getting announced, pointing out everything wrong with it. <laughs> Whereas, like, I remember like when the spiral came out, like the insomniac were all with it. They were getting behind it, like, "Yep, we helped them with the code. We showed them what you know. We what we told them what the stuff they should take creative freedom with." 
but it's stuff like you, you know, it's nice to see when the original studio gets involved. Um, so it's it's I don't know. I think yeah, you make a good point. I think maybe there should be these sub teams that are there just to keep legacy content alive. I don't know. I I do think the reason is that developers just don't want to be giving their IPs to other people, which is just kind of dumb and greedy in my opinion. But it's, I think you can just give it to someone else and being like, just remake it. Don't change anything. Don't take any creative license with it. Just update the textures and graphics and and do stuff like that. But I also think they should give the option to play the original as well. I think I, I, I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the new Medieval game came out, and if you got a hundred percent completion, you could play the original PS One yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> which I, like that's so cool that's such an amazing cool. or even like, just having that option because i remember the monkey have you ever played the monkey island uh phd release it was just a press of a button i think the halo collection is the same you press a button it shows original graphics it's just that that's a really simple i'm sure it's not simple like, game film is difficult as hell but that's just such a simple way to like yep here's our version of spiral here's our version of crash but you can still experience the games you know and love from when you were a child as well and yeah there's definitely that kind of nostalgia factor to all these kind of titles as well. I mean, I think this discussion is very much fueled by that because we just have such a kind of bond to these games. And I know, like, when you're speaking about the PS5, like, when we hoped it would be this grand console that had PS1 and everything on it, and I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to play Jackie Chan's Stuntmaster <laughs> now on a PS5. I can't wait. And then sadly not... Um, yeah, I, I just think it's an interesting place to be in, especially as a game developer. I just, I think from a marketing perspective as well, it's such a a unique prospect, not only to be able to, A, put out a game that's technically new because you're getting people to pay full price for it, and then B, you're also working with this kind of established fan base as well. I just... <sighs> I'm I'm just getting excited thinking about all these games that I just want in my yeah, head. What just game would you want remade back. apart from Dog's Life? What is the one you're <laughs> clamoring Ooh, for? What would I want like remade from like the ground up? Yeah, kind? either or. Like, you probably yeah, we'll go remade. Like what Th- is that's something... a good question. Um, I know I've been trying to think about it as I asked that question, and that is a really good question. I would actually. like because of how good Final Fantasy VII remake was, I'd die if they did the same for Final Fantasy X. But I'd know they won't because they've just been churning out that same HD remake for seven years, which is fine. It really it still holds up, but I'd love I'd, to yeah. see that get the full HD remake treatment. I'd say Final Fantasy VI to be honest, because so many people say the story is so amazing, and it is, and it's it's such a great game. But I do think it's it's kind of hint the storytelling is hindered by the fact that it's a two D pixelated game. That's the thing that like Square Enix have just they've I mean now that they've shown how good Final Fantasy VII, I know we all love it, and I know there's not a lot of people you know aren't huge in it, but they've shown how like how well a good job they did with that despite it taking seven years or whatever. Well, now the problem is just we want everything to get remade, <laughs> even as good as that. The God, I mean. Just think that the the presentation of that game alone, like the cinematics, the voice acting, the music, if that was if they did that with other Final Fantasy content, it'd just be unbelievable. Even even the seven remake took so long because they pretty much scrapped their entire development. I think it was like uh, the first year or two and revamped everything yeah. because I forget who was doing it, but it was an out of house project, right? And then the main Square Enix team took over and and pretty much redid everything. I think um, it's coming back to what you said, then, Kyle. What game would I like remade? Um, I mentioned Max Payne for Real, and I don't know whether this would take the nuance out of it. But if they remade the first game, but on that engine, I know Remedy obviously had the kind of control with the first two games, and then Rockstar kind of uh, handled the third one. On the Did you mean that pun control? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) She had to check. (laughs) But yeah, I don't know whether it would take the nuance out of it, but if they remade the first Max Payne on that engine for the third game and you had the kind of uh, movement style of that in there, uh, I'd be curious to see that. But again, that is a risky line to play Mm. because I think the the first Max Payne game as it is, is fantastic. And I think the the reason it works so well is because it's got that kind of heightened John Woo esque style to it, whereas Max Payne Free is a bit more realistic and 
I'd, I'd say it's like the probably the closest thing you can get to like a John Wick game. Yeah, I think I think the gunplay feels very much in that wheelhouse. I think the tough thing with that would be as well. Like I think the easy scapegoat for if people didn't like the Final Fight Seven remake is you can easily go cool if the original still there and the original Final Fight Seven is one of the easiest games to get access off. It is on everything. So yeah. if the Final Fantasy X remake came out, man, I hate it. It's like that's fine. They tried something new, I didn't like it. But then, like you're saying, Max Payne one and two and three, they're harder games to get a hold of now. So if they remake yeah. that and they, you know, they just don't get the feel of it right, they maybe don't nail the style. That's kind of what you're stuck with now. I think in Max Payne three there was kind of a taste for that original game vibe when um the chapter where you do. I don't know if you play, you both played uh, it, but the chapter where. Great. Yeah, the chapter where you go back to New York and uh, it's like a flashback sequence. Like, I think you get the kind of grit of the first game in there. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I'm thinking in my head. Like, you just get the taste for it. And yeah, like, if it hasn't come across or any past two episodes, I just really love Max Payne. Max Payne really like to awesome. see I forgot how good that, that game franchise was. franchise to return, please. Please. Yeah, please, Rockstar, stop making <laughs> money on GTA 5 for five if you, minutes. If you're not going to make a sequel to that, then make a sequel to. To Canis KM Edit or yes, Bully, please, as it's known please, in please, other please, please. regions. Please, please. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I just want, yeah. I know we kind of, I thought this conversation might have feel, felt like it has went off topic, but in a way, like we were saying, it's kind of, it's not because I feel like it's the next, it's going to get worse in a way because they're not going to re release these games that have, because the PS4, the last couple of years, has been remastered after remastered. They're not going to release them again. By the time we get to like the generation after this, no, not at all. Yeah, are we going to be in the same situation again? Because there's still no legacy platform. It's just all going to keep being regurgitated unless they decide like, right, we need to make this content accessible. But... You watch in five years' time, it'll be like, here's Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain remastered. God. Woohoo! And we've finished story content. Uh... <laughs> that's the thing, though. We're only talking about like these super popular games that get ported, like. Final Fantasy 7, Resident Evil 4, Skyrim. There's so many games yeah. just lost yeah. to history. And it like the game companies are basically they're they, well, first of all, they don't even acknowledge it, right? They don't talk about their legacy content. They're always focusing on the new stuff for marketing and and PR and stuff like that. But it's just so cumbersome that they want us to go and find these old games and then find the old consoles to go play them on and set that up and maybe you have to buy a CTR TV to play the games or get an adapter. Yeah. It's just it's so much work rather than hey, can you just can you just port this game? Like you don't have to change anything, you don't have to revamp the graphics. Literally just put it on the PlayStation store, on the eShop, whatever. And like yeah. um Sam said releasing these games and remasters or even just ports can be such good marketing tools for newer games in the series or or just your company as a whole right it it keeps the conversation going about Square Enix or Capcom or Nintendo or whoever and um like with the Crash Bandicoot remakes that came out solely to gauge interest for a new Crash Bandicoot game. Obviously, they wanted to make money too, and and that's always the main goal. But, um, it's pretty. It, it's a well known marketing tool now. It's like, oh, we have this game series that people say they love, but making a new game might be kind of a gamble. So let's do a remaster of the old games to kind of gauge the interest, to see what's going mm-hmm. on. Yeah, and, um releasing these old games and porting old games also can just create a lot of new fans for future games like i remember when yeah. um the super nintendo mini or the classic came out and that was the first time i played super metroid and i was like yo i love this this is fun like i see now why people like the series I'm going to buy future games. I'll play future games. So because of an old game, mm-hmm. now I'm into a, a a new game franchise that I never would have been able to play before. Now I'll buy Metroid Prime 4. Um, I'd buy a, a, a Metroid Prime trilogy if it ever came. And it, 
I don't know. It just it's such a wasted opportunity. And I get that game developers want to focus on what's new and to promote that. But you can do very basic marketing for um you know a, an HD version of Ocarina of Time on Switch and it's it's still gonna make money. We've said multiple times throughout this whole conversation, oh I've already bought this game three or four times. You're gonna buy it again. L- like Kyle said, there's nothing like <laughs> just playing your switch in bed i i've double and triple dipped on multiple games just because it's it's a portable platform and i i think yeah, so many sure. people do that you're just getting me sad about all these games. I, I am mad about it i think i think it's <laughs> bad bad business design i think it's bad for the industry and the consumer and it's it's bad for video game preservation and history Again, like I've said, we've we talk about all these famous games like Max Payne and and Rockstar and and Resident Evil and stuff like that that always get ported or talked about. But think of the thousands upon thousands of games that are just lost to history because they didn't sell more than a hundred thousand copies or a million copies. Like all these classics that people have played, but they're not widely known, and they're never gonna get ported again. And and um. That's it. They're gone. They're only really there yeah. because of the internet and and memory. Yeah, it, it's super sad. And like you think as well, like these teams and people that have worked on them, and you can imagine at the time when they're working, like they're thinking like this is such a cool thing that I'm doing right now, and I'm I'm the intent with everything like in any medium, like film, music, TV, anything. The the intent is always there. Like I I really hope people connect with this. On like a personal level, on the in, in t- entertainment level, and it is sad that there's these all these titles that aren't necessarily the the bigger kind of temple ones that are being lost. And uh, thankfully, in kind of like the age we're in now, we can kind of preserve that, even if it's not necessarily playing them, but kind of the existence of them on the internet. And there's people like us that talk about them and write about them and stuff. But it is extremely sad that um they just aren't available. It's like um, Kylie said on the last episode um, with film archiving, like it's such a huge thing in America, like to preserve all these reels of of classic cinema and stuff like that, and we just don't have that for games. It's it's such an odd like place to be in. It's like the Spiral trilogy when that got announced. Like I can't shut. I think that's the most excited I'd ever been about a game getting announced in my life. It's but it's like why <laughs> I shouldn't be excited about. A game that's getting remastered, a game from the nineties. It was just nostalgia. That, just that game's so important. Yeah, that game's so important to me. And I mean, that franchise died pretty hard after Insomniac bailed. But it was just so awesome. See, because I know people who are now like Spyro fans, and that's the first time they played it, and they loved it. And then they like they never played it as a kid, and it just still holds up. And like as you're saying, so like, it is a nostalgia aspect. You get to play and like, oh my god, this is it with a new coat of paint. But it's still just like these games, for the most part, are a lot of the times they're still good. Like I know we're saying like Mario sixty four doesn't hold up maybe that well, but it's still a pretty great game mm-hmm. if you can get past its shortcomings. Same like Ocarina of Time, that's still a really solid game. So many of these games are still dog's life. I'm joking. But <laughs> this is gonna sound insane, but um, so it's one of like the best selling games on the PS one when it came out. But Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone were the source oh from my the God. PS one. Flippendo. Yeah. It's, I, look, I've been championing the meme culture of that game for about 10 years and now it's ran <laughs> the, the official Sony Twitter tweeted the photo of Hagrid like I've got a poster of PS1 <laughs> Hagrid on my wall that I've I've been doing this for a long time Sony don't steal my thunder but it's, it's just even games like that I play that every year because I think it's like the funniest thing ever like it's, it's not even it's a pretty good game like, it's Kyle's right. it's like, like some... he's like I'm not saying I should get royalties but I'd expect a check <laughs> yeah. in the mail every yeah. now and then yeah come Come on, JK it's weird rolling. that um, you mentioned Philosopher's Stone, actually. I'm not saying I've been emulating it. I do own the game, though, with people, <laughs> if the FBI are listening to me. I own the game, but uh, I may have been emulating it at, uh, at the minute and enjoying uh, Filch's cat catching me, <laughs> trying to use the invisibility cloak in the library. I can complete it in under an hour now. That's my... What? Yeah, I was trying to let... There's a way to complete it in half an hour, but it's this. you have to do this skip that's really hard to pull off, and I can't do it, but... An hour, I can stick with an hour, it's pretty good. But is it, yeah, not, have you played this game? Yeah, you need to play it, please. No, uh, I'm sorry. But <gasps> Right, next time we do a stream, we're going <laughs> to, either me or Sam will stream it, I'd... and we'll 
a watch. <laughs> I can't believe we've had this whole conversation and Sam just brought it up, but emulation. Literally, people will break the law to play these old games. And e- even after the fact that they own them, just because it's easier to play them mm-hmm. that way. And yeah. And obviously, these companies are in their uh, legal right and, and moral right to to say it's illegal and to crack down on stuff like that. And I'm sure companies like Nintendo don't want people to emulate Super Mario 64 because they want to re-release it again to the public, so we'll buy it for the fifth time. But like we said, there's so many games out there that have just been lost to history besides the fact that you can emulate them now because so many dedicated people um, work on things like this and, and to preserving the history of video games and and things like that because so many developers just don't they're so focused on new or what's popular that they don't really even if the fan base is small that's still um people who love your company and love a product you make games don't make syndication like films or tv once you have a, a game or a series that's stagnant it does nothing it, it it doesn't make you any money that's why after so many years horizon zero dawn is released on pc because Sure, it'll make some some sales when it goes on sale. It'll make some money. But it's mostly just sitting there, not really doing anything. And I just think it's wrong. I think, and again, I think it's losing companies' money. Yeah, you're spot on. Like, I, I, for me, I, I've, I've emulated Harry Potter on the PS1 as well. It's as stupid as an example it is. Like, I think it's quite relevant. It's like me and Sam both own that copy. But we do. it's 10 times easier to play it on the computer, especially even for like streaming purposes and stuff like that. Like obviously, you can't really fault the original, like the PS2 or the PS1, for not be able to stream that easily. But it's just people, we don't emulate because you're like, I'm going to break the law, I'm going to be a badass. Like, you don't have a choice. It's like, okay, I want to play Harry Potter on the PS1 because it's a masterpiece, but <laughs> my PS2 is 20 years old and barely works. But, like, but genuinely, yeah. if that, so if you couldn't emulate that game, you you wouldn't ever that's it you would never play harry potter on the ps1 ever again that's it and that's a crime like, in itself but, that's the real crime <laughs> it's just insane though and you say, like when you say it out loud like if you said that with a film like uh okay back to the future it came out in 1985 but uh we've not dvd players we updated them since then there's no way to watch that anymore sorry but like, it's just insane but that's spot how on have not had that think of how fucking crazy that is like imagine if somebody said that like Oh, we again. We don't have DVDs, so Lord of the Rings is just lost. It's just gone to history. <laughs> oh I would God. kill someone. I would literally <laughs> kill someone. <laughs> We'd have to remake it. Like, no, just every ten years, don't, we got to remake it again. Don't even choke about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, like, it's so true, though. It's like it's like a weird analogy, but it's like it's the same thing. There's just not this. I mean, video games have been here a long enough time now that this stuff needs to start getting taken seriously. We're we're gonna keep. It developing the stuff says, so like, you know what, maybe maybe the PS5 should be able to play PS1 to PS3 games, maybe that's not as stupid as it is to suspect that, maybe that's the thing they need to do like, I, I think that would be a huge step for a console to take if someone was like, this is like, if it, you can play all your PlayStation games in this phys- and then the physical media, like second hand stores, would make everybody wins in that situation to be honest don't they, it's like that whole kind of market just gets a boost again. I I should mention that there was a study done to see how often people use backwards compatibility on newer consoles and it is quite low but then Mm -hmm. at the same time it's like well that's because you know 70-60% of people who own these consoles are just very casual players who are only playing Fortnite and NBA you know all the time. It's like even if it yeah. is a small fraction of people who use it, it's it still needs to be there. Even if there is a tiny percent of people still playing Harry Potter <laughs> on the PS One. Hell yeah! <laughs> These communities don't really ever die out. Like I've been a part of the Fire Emblem community for a long time, and the love for the older games has only grown and grown as these series have have evolved. And I don't know what kind of community the Harry Potter scene has with these old <laughs> games, but if there was just a bit more love shown to them, like 
there's something there. There's something there that you can not only monetize, but curate and build upon. I'm just, I'm just getting sad, that, to be honest. I think me and Kyle need to take it upon ourselves to expand upon the Quidditch mini game in I, the PS1. Can I just so make it known, by the way, to it? Before, you, before you mention that, uh, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone sold more copies on the PS1 than Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, Crash Bandicoot, and Metal Gear Solid. Just like to make that known. The, the... That's crazy. <laughs> is, is that true? This is Wikipedia. It sold 8 million copies. Where's the 4K Fuck. remake? This is bullshit. So, like, like, I mean... More than Metal Gear. More than Final Fantasy IX. More Fuck than Resident Evil. Hell. More than Spyro. More than Rayman. Remake, more than Tony Hawk's. Remake all the graphics except PS1 Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> keep that in you done it now are you poor <laughs> but yeah you can explain the quidditch mini game and how that's uh, the predecessor oh, to oh, all still, sports you're in for a treat. i know we're as we've said on last, on these episodes we sidetrack but this is essential information yeah. i think yeah i think so the people. public needs to know um when when you complete harry potter and the philosopher's stone you can't um like go back on to the open like kind of semi-open world hogwarts unfortunately but you can play Quidditch to your heart's extent, <laughs> and it's and it's nothing short of awesome. It is great. It's very addictive, and if they are, if that now had online capabilities, I would play the shit out of that every day. Man, you know, you every know how day. that new Harry Potter game we finally got the trailer yeah. this year. What if like six yeah. months before release, they're like, "Hey, here's Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for PS One, just to get you." A little oh hype <laughs> for the new game, but like so many people know. Like, if you post a photo of PS One Hagrid, <laughs> it, like, it bangs. Like people are like, yes, there he is. There's that. There's that. My guy. My guy's like. So just engage in the meme culture of it all. If you're gonna do anything, I know it's taken too long to even get a Harry Potter game in the first place. But that's besides the point. But oh, I mean, I don't, I we we discussed it a little yeah. bit. The the new Harry Potter game when it was announced and. It's kind of it's it's an odd topic at the minute, just with um, news surrounding a certain yeah. creator of that franchise who we we don't need to name. Yeah. <laughs> Harry Potter. But, um, <laughs> Harry Dan, Potter. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like holy shit! Like if if that new Harry Potter game has, because I'm guessing it's gonna have online capability and people can team up and wander around Hogwarts and stuff like that. If it has any semblance of a Quidditch mini game, I'm going to be there. Like it's going to be like the new Rocket League for me. I'm going to be there, squadding up tournaments. I hope there's like an Easter egg for PS One Hagrid. <laughs> oh, I'd love to see something, even a trophy or something like that. What broom have you got? Yeah, I've got a Nimbus 2001. What about you, my guy? I went on. I read it, and there was a petition four years ago to get Harry Potter and the PS One uh, remastered. I'm, uh, I'm trying to see how many signs it got, but. Uh, 278 we're starting strong right? <laughs> we've got this that's just me and you like spamming <laughs> with different names um, you're gonna see it go yeah. up one more because I'm going on to sign <laughs> I really want to play it now I did stream this playing it two years ago and it's it's the best it's the funniest game to stream in the world it's so it's not even a, it's not a bad game it's just something about it it's so cursed he has one spell that is true one spell Look, for Pendo, Harry Potter, that's what you want. He's king. Oh, don't even get me like this. Oh, I'm not gonna get started on like the con- the consistencies of the magic in Harry <laughs> Potter more, because like yeah, it makes no oh, sense. Chamber of Secrets, Expelliarmus, it like blows people across the room, but mm-hmm. then four films later, it just disarms people. Like, what's going on with that? But we don't need to dive into that. That's that. that if, well, if we I'll talk about Harry Potter, hours. we will really be here all day. I can promise you. That. Next episode is just gonna be called PS One Hagrid. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna the say, cover won't even have like any text to tell you what the episode is. Please make the thumbnail for this. <laughs> yes, one hundred. Has to be. After the episode, you know he's gonna throw in the group chat and like uh, a link. I've already got it saved. A link to to the text from the play Twitter that's just gonna be a PS One hackered with no context. <laughs> I'm not saying that that might be the outlet now, <laughs> and it might appear in the chat later. I'm not saying that. <laughs> the title will be Next Gen Consoles and Legacy Content <laughs> PS1 Access. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think uh, with this little sidestep, it's a good time as ever to kind of give us closing thoughts on uh, the topics we've discussed so <laughs> far and uh, with legacy titles. Um, where I kind of stand with it is 
similar to what we've we've both said. It's just it's a shame that companies aren't capitalizing on it, and there are these games being lost to time that should be preserved. And it's even sadder now, was and like you said, Kyle's we're going to the new generation that they are going to get forgotten again, and it's only going to be games from the last generation rather that are going to see these remasters rather than like quote unquote older games and it is a shame so games that sold well to not just yeah not just games that were on the last platform yeah yeah profitability is all as as ever the most important thing and it's a shame so i don't mean to end the episode on a downer note but that's where, <laughs> where I am I, i'll with try and pick titles. us up a wee bit um the P- ps5 is out for me and Sam next week. I can't stress enough how excited I am for the next generation of gaming to start. I can't remember the last time I was this excited to... As much as I was excited when I got my hands on my PS4, I just don't remember there was that moment with my PlayStation 4. I was like, oh my god, this is next gen. There was something about it that didn't feel like a, a huge leap. And this may be because it sounds like a bone 357 and I'm ready to get a console that isn't that loud. Or the controller haptics that I keep seeing so much about. But I'm just really excited to get kicked into this next generation of gaming. and. Hopefully we see legacy content start to get treated a wee bit better. <laughs> Maybe this is the podcast that starts the movement. Maybe this is it. But um, on the brighter note, I think we're going to get some good games over the next generation, I think. We'll see what Nintendo are up to. They'll just continue to do their own thing. And who knows? Maybe we could all be proven wrong in the next year. They'll be like, Sykes, there's a PS1 disc drive in the back. <laughs> Nintendo's like Sykes, Super Mario Sunshine 2 for you, Kyle. Yeah. I, j- I just had a really cursed thought is that instead of Astro's Playroom to show off the dual, uh, the dual sense capabilities, it's just Harry Potter and the PS1 <laughs> with dual sense. And that is my closing remark. So I will leave you with that thought. What if they did the game in VR, though? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. All oh, the God. shitty textures. Yeah. Can- <laughs> yeah, you, you can go up and talk to shit. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> See, we've picked it up. <laughs> oh my god, it's just it's just that one image. It's iconic. <laughs> you do, you done it now, Harry Potter. <laughs> I need to go to Diagonal and get me some fire seeds for an orbit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, what we're trying to say, folks, is that... Um, <laughs> I quit. Before, uh, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> before we wrap it up and talk uh, about our lovely Patreons, um, the real message of this episode is that you need to play Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. Uh, however, where you can... We're not endorsing illegal means, but um, if you can... We're endorsing a VR game, version. <laughs> Sign yeah, the petition. We are endorsing a VR version. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's 280 signatures on it currently right now <laughs> but yeah before we go um, as ever with uh, Jumpcast and Playcast our patrons get a lovely shout out and get our lovely Ryan Gosling tears as well so this is for the only God subscribe tears uh, we've got Chris Wilson Let There Be Like Productions Zoe Baines Daryl Griffiths Sam Luck Ola Smith Peter Hodgkins Andy Meekin, Fabiona Rosas, Hamish Calvert, and Martin Richmond. We really appreciate your support. And if you do want to head over to our Patreon, if you aren't subscribed, um, if you subscribe at any tier, you get every issue of Jump Cut Magazine um, for free. And we've got issue free on the way, as we've mentioned in this episode, and a lot of cool things coming up with that. But um, before we do wrap up the I review to have anything you want to plug, anything you want to shout out? Just Harry Potter. <laughs> um, no, uh, uh, I guess check me out on Twitter at Kyle Gaff. I just did a review of Watch Dogs Legion, which is my first review for the site. Which um, it's quite a scathing review, but saying like, when, like, like not to spoil my rating, but like, my rating is pretty much like, it's all right. Get it on sale, you might enjoy <laughs> it. I feel like Sam might feel the same way about it, but um, I hope forgot. I'm kind of in the same boat. Yeah, yeah and should have a hopefully a call of duty review coming out in the next week or Indeed. so um hopefully get to get to grips with that but yeah just check me out on twitter for you will i whatever day well whatever day this comes out I, by the time i finish recording this there will be a haggard meme in the <laughs> next 10 minutes so <laughs> um i want to plug the fact that we should have a ps1 haggard patreon tier now it should be like the ultimate tier <laughs> I think that'd be funny. I will run it by Jacob and see what he says. <laughs> Good luck with I know that. they're all Ryan Gosling themed, Jacob, but 
this is imperative. If we Photoshop Hagrid's face onto Rangon's body, can we make it work? <laughs> That's godly. But anyway, um, you can find me on Twitter at Silver Sterling. Uh, I got a article coming out about Hyrule Warriors and why the game is more fun when you play on a very hard difficulty because it really mm-hmm. makes you utilize the game's mechanics to its fullest. And I think that's just the case for most games. Like I said, with I beat Final Fantasy VII Remake on hard and it was just such a, a great time. But also don't feel bad for playing games on easy. Just enjoy it. Just do what you like. And I love you all so, so much. <laughs> it's true. We do love you all and, and Grig. <laughs> <laughs> PS1 Hagrid cared for me in times <laughs> when I was very young and made sure that I got to Diagon Alley, so I trust him. <laughs> and you should trust him too. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching, uh, watching, listening rather. I mean, you could watch the audio file i guess if you're into that kind of thing mm-hmm. but thank you for listening to this episode of playcast and we'll see you again soon but in the meantime stay safe and see you later Good night. bye, bye.